I'm Fenwa. I'm Lobs. And I'm Demo Weasel. And welcome back to the Fifth Element. Uh, we have just escaped Zorg headquarters as Lilu. Oh. Did we now? That's right. That is the building that is behind us right now. Prove it. <laughs> Look at this this, uh. this uh, crazy future with this uh, with the fashion of tomorrow. Also, it's still nighttime, as you can tell. What really? So this is like what what. We, we were supposed to fill in the blanks with. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In all those dingy, foggy levels. Oh, no. Well, Corbin already escaped, so we're just going to rendezvous with him and then... Ah. Uh, oh. Get it? Perfect. Such is the end of Lilu. No, she's in the cab. It's cool. No, she fell. In. Oh, look. Now we're in the Star Wars. Yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> Ying. We're back at Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Back at Star Wars HQ. Low thing again. I feel like the title <laughs> screen keeps giving us the middle finger. Yeah. So this is another uh, another mission that we get to play through twice. Oh. Oh. Hey, but that's Excellent. that's that's to complete global goals. <laughs> that's right. Corbin, Devin. Ooh. Corbin, Unbelievable. There, oh, there is no clip of Chris Tucker saying mm. Lulu. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this is the closest thing we found on the soundtrack. That <laughs> sounds like he's saying Lilu. Mm -hmm. Ooh! <laughs> <Scott>. <laughs> Just loop the sound of him screaming and go with that. <laughs> yep. In the distant future, English is rendered in a, re in a really stupid way. Just like it is now. So yeah, now we're at the depths of New York City. And you immediately get murdered, just like in New York City. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, the start of this level is kind of bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's find out. Let's see how bullshit it is. I like that the, the level started you, like, facing a dead end uh, of a railing. Yeah. Oh shit, they, they modeled the, the ing sign. <laughs> so this is your recommended strategy? Just dash in yes. and let the gun Just do electro the work. gun everything. Wow, that guy va vaporized. No, he teleported away safely because Corbin is not a cop killer. Mm -hmm. Oh, he slowly became vaporized. That is a hero. Oh, you were just He's my hero. Running in place there. Oh. Okay. Man, Make sure not to use the flower pot. How do you switch weapons? Uh, select plus the triggers, I believe. Oh, God. Or maybe it's just the triggers. It's very intuitive. And thank God for analog sticks. Would you say that? Oh, uh, nope. They don't do anything in this game. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, for... Like, because without those, we wouldn't have weapon wheels or, like, other intuitive methods of selection. Yeah. All right. I love weapon wheels. Reserving the D-pad for, uh for quick weapon selects. Of course, that in itself is why is the reason why a lot of modern uh, shooters and action games have three, three weapons. weapons carried at all times. Look at this. Hmm. Oh, no! Oh, yeah, also there's uh, there's lava pits more in like, the depths of New York City. More like corpse and deadless. Uh. I noticed that there's a lot of fog in New York City, too. Well, that's canon with the movie. What, yeah, really? That's right. Yeah, like, this is when they they escape the cops by hiding in a in in old New York. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Which is not the futuristic sky New York. Exactly. Oh. So this is Futurama, is what you're saying. Yes. And uh, we are we get to play as Leela and uh, Philip J. Fryer here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is I like a, that sound like, effect. When, the, when they came out with the Futurama PS2 game, they basically reskinned this. Yeah. Really? No. They should have. Yes, they reskinned a PS1 game for PS2. I don't know if they would have noticed. So right here, there's a um, there's one of those waist high areas, and you know what that means. We're just coming back here later. Uh, it's cover. It's reverse cover because it's missing. Nice. But we did have to kill that cop and get a subway pass. Yeah. Actually, I think I was a Mangalore. Yeah, whatever. Someone had a subway pass for some reason, and we needed it. Things just keep shooting you from off screen. Yeah, uh, their range is greater than the fog is, and oh, you got freeze. I prefer to use the electro gun, which does not have infinite range, so I just sort of have to get up close and do my thing. Also, these buildings have a lot of fire exits. Well, so boy, very, that's where I got my dinner from. They are inherently flammable. Look at that. 
There's there's manholes in old New York. That's right. Can you flip them over? No. Do you go to the sewers in this game? Uh, it's a video game, so yes. Okay. Do, do you go sewer uh, sewer surfing? Do you get shell shocked? <laughs> or is it uh, 3 a.m.? <laughs> I'm not going to dignify that with a response. You should. So what does Freeze do? Use it. Freeze is one of the attachments for the ZF-1, mm-hmm. just like in the movie. Uh, you can't use all the ZF-1 features all at once. You have to uh, select a specific modifier for it. Also, I don't know why I got a subway pass. Kicking down the door seemed to work pretty well, too. Yeah, you get no warning at all for when these guys just start shooting at you. No, that's probably why the game gives you shields. It's because Corbin Dallas is a good guy. Look at that. Wow. It's like they're, they're already waiting there for you. And this guy has uh, has that running animation problem, too. Oh, where his torso doesn't move. Yeah. Is there any place outside um, Flossed in Paradise in the movie where uh, where Zorg is like, oh, Corbin Dallas is doing something. Let me send my forces to stop him. I don't think Zorg is ever aware of Corbin Dallas in the entire movie. Yeah. Like, I, I remember... Oh, the well. the only interaction those two characters have directly is that, like, Zorg fires Corbin from the cab company inadvertently because he fires one million people. Mm-hmm. So revenge, yeah. But yeah, like, uh, it's actually one of the nice things about the movie is that they never actually interact. Mm-hmm. It's it's very clever storytelling. They are never in the same scene together. Oh. That guy teleported to a wrong spot. Corbin Dallas is a spawn camper. <laughs> you keep picking up all this shit that just obscures like one third of your screen. <laughs> Most of it is uh, is ammo for either this gun or the ZF-1. You just, like, okay, you just get a missile. And there's a live missile just hanging out here yeah. in this derelict subway station. I guess that's why this is old New York. Uh, old New York was, was destroyed. Um... By Back in the far-flung future of 1987. Yep. Back when uh, Mad World happened. Well, old New York was once New Amsterdam. What are you shooting at? Uh, a guy. I'm not going to indulge your reference. Okay. Just so you know. Colored lighting again. Wow. Oh, no. What? This this game is a technological showpiece. I guess. Yeah, that's why they give you shields, is because you die a lot. But what what even shot you? A guy. That guy? Yeah, see? You should have checked for guys. Well, he's fucked now. And as always, I'm sort of bumping up against every single door because you have no visual indicator of which ones are unlocked and which ones are locked. Hmm. What things have to be opened up by shooting at them. Is that a drum of spiders? (laughs) Huh? There you go. Flower pot. Use it on the flame. I've picked up the element of fire. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know why I roll with the pistol ever. If it's going to get drained that fast. What? Okay, why even give you a life bar and a shield to like to begin with? I mean, you said that uh, that one diz physical damage does more to the butt than it does to the shield but like still but it's yeah why pointless. why have a shield if it's going to get whittled away and before you even see the enemy on screen yeah yeah, yeah. i don't have an answer for that but i do agree with the sentiment and maybe if the shield recharged maybe if it was like halo one uh uh-huh. I remember, like, No One Lives Forever had a pretty good mechanic relating to that. That health could not be recovered mid-mission, because, mm-hmm. like, that's that's just the way it is. Um, mm-hmm. And you can only uh, armor yourself so much at, at any one time. So, usually you only had, like, one supply of body armor, um, mm-hmm. uh, like a Kevlar vest or something like that. 
Right. Um, and only in rare circumstances would you actually find something to replenish that, I believe. Wow. It's been a while since I played it, though. Uh, you know, I recall Goldeneye for N64 having uh, armor pickups, but not health pickups. Uh, Maybe I'm misremembering, though. What's it? Uh, the Brothers in Arms series, I think, as at least the first two games, uh, they had no health pickups whatsoever and no oh, armor. Nice. So you also, just... I'm going to warn you, we spend the rest of this uh, video in this area here. Are we in the sewers? Uh, yeah, we're in the sewers, and <laughs> I get pretty lost. So It's the late 90s, and we're designing a 3D game. That means we have to have a sewer level. Hey, what yep. about that game that was nothing but sewer levels, Forsaken? Uh, for... Oh, Forsaken. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Forsaken had some neat levels, though, in the sewers. But which one? Forsaken or Forsaken 64? For second 64. And don't even get me started on Sewer Shark. Ah. <laughs> yep, that game's all sewers too. Nothing you know what but else sewers. Game with the sewers. Fuck? So so this this level right now, this is the epitome of the like go to point A, push the switch, run a, all the way across the hallway to point B, push the switch, run back to where point A was, go five feet further, push another switch. Yeah, that sounds like, like 90s shooter design. Yeah, we keep <laughs> retreading the same hallways over and over again because every time we open up another door, it lets us get a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Couple that with the fact that, like, on some doors you can unlock them from one side but not the other, so I'm opening up pathways to areas that I'd previously been able to get to, but I didn't realize that because they all look the same. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the next six minutes is mostly backtracking. This game uh, probably would have benefited from having a map. Yeah. <laughs> it would have benefited from a lot of things, uh, chiefly being a different game. This game would have benefited from being good. Yes. It would have benefited from thor from uh, having forethought put into its design, for instance. <laughs> Instead of just being something that, uh, like, cobbled together uh, within a the very... The design document was just like a stick figure of Lilu in her, like, thermal bandages. Yep. That's all. Yes. It would have benefited from using the uh, the iconic uh, hover taxi police chase sequence for more than an FMV level transition between okay. two third-person action I'm gonna sequences. I'm going to stop you on that. Are you are you okay? Seeing that the way they handle this stuff, do you really want like a driving stage in this game? It would have been a nice change of pace. I, I think Frankie has a point though. <laughs> <laughs> would have been like the the transition between levels in. Uh, the first Legend of Spyro game. I would have said uh, the Ratchet and Clank games. Well, I feel like my analogy is more inapt because that is also a bad game. Oh. What's this game rated? Kids to adults. Uh, T for Teen. T for Teen. Animated violence. Animated violence. Oh, it's, I, it's rated I, I remember, T for Teen. Just I remember... <laughs> I remember when they had uh, animated violence and realistic violence as uh, as like separate descriptors. Uh, which one would Tony Hawk have had? Along with animated blood and gore and realistic blood and gore. Comic Mortal Kombat mischief. Trilogy had one of those two. Can you guess which one it was? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I tried to shoot a missile at that grate to break it, but instead the missile goes through the grate. I think that's great. And then I fire off a second missile at the side of it, hoping the splash damage would do it in, but I, I guess that grate can't be blown up anyway. Just kick it. Which is fantastic. Wow. And at this point, yes, I am actually lost. I, <laughs> I always get frustrated when, when you have to use, like, you know, let's say, oh, you know, I can kick this box open, but, like, if I try to blow it up with a rocket launcher, nothing happens. I hate it when games yeah. do that. Yes. That looks like like a sacred temple that was put in the middle. And yeah. uh, this area that I'm walking away from, that was actually where I was supposed to go. But it looks so much like where I came from that I thought that I'd gone backwards. It looks like the the beginning of this whole section. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that it actually does send you back to the where you came from. But again, like you flicked a switch that opened a door that was previously not opened. But which door is it? And uh, that no exit sign that I just passed by is where I actually end the level at, so I go all the way back through the section at least one more time. Jesus Christ. Uh. So at this point, I'm actually doing that labyrinth, like, hug the left wall thing, mm -hmm. hoping that eventually I'll reach a new area. <laughs> well, you're... 
You're almost there. Yep. He's lost in the in the annals of the fifth element. He's lost in the annals of the fifth and element. And again, I, I believe I've just walked away from where I'm supposed to go because <laughs> it looks identical to where I came from. Uh, it's okay. He, Femwa just wanted to to play a game where he where he got to experience like being uh, his number one man crush, Bruce Willis. Hey. Um, <laughs> and he didn't even get that. Nope. Instead, we got a guy with an orange shirt. It's uh, yeah. it's David Cage from mm -hmm. Lucas Kane. Uh, Beyond Two Souls. <laughs> yes. There we go. Okay. Despite my best efforts, we have progressed through the level. But yeah, this looks like a forbidden temple that's just in the middle of New York for some reason. Like, why are yeah. there torches here that are lit? Because uh, they, uh, the corpses maintain it. And now we get all the way back there to kill that dude to get the elevator key that's going to open up the door all the way back where we just were before we came back here again. Mm-hmm. Game design. Maybe the Order of Valtiel has set up headquarters here. Maybe you run into Carrie Ann Moss. That's right. Maybe? Yeah, maybe. God, she was in that, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. <laughs> oh, Trinity. Oh. Where did your career go? Uh, the movie we're talking about, by the way, is Silent Hill Revelation 3D, which I completely recommend. Well, no. It's not 3D these days, of course. Well, it's... Don't watch it. it. You, can, you feel like you're watching it in 3D because there's so many like moments of the the things popping out of the camera. Mm -hmm. There we go. And it looks, nope, it yep, feels like yes, you're really there. there. All right. Up. You, oh. Ah. We've managed to ah. bullshit our way through four minutes of nothing happening on screen. Congratulations, yes. everybody. Woohoo. Perfect. And that's the end of the level. Yay. Oh, I'm so, so proud of us for making it through this. Here's a question. Do you think they usually cast Willem Dafoe as a villain because his last name has foe in it? Good night, everybody. <laughs> Stopping this recording. Perfect.